So I got this the other day. It's a big box of bottles. Because I had been seeing pictures of sculpted bottles on Instagram and they looked like so much fun. And as you know, I have a very large perfume collection and I thought how fun would it be to put some of my perfumes into here and then like sculpt on them. So that is exactly what I did. And the result was this little guy. I am very happy with how this turned out. I have yet to um, shellac or glaze it, but like the little owl is on the cap. And the bottles came with these like spray tops, so I could actually put real perfume inside. <laughs> I just think it's so cute. I'm really happy with it, and I got very good feedback online. Um, and a bunch of people on Reddit wanted to see how I did the damn thing. But first I'd like a cup of tea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look, I'll do it again. I want another one. No, don't, I don't want that. No, I don't want it. I want it. I just finished this yesterday. It's a burb. You... I love oh, him. It's focusing on my face, not on your teat. <laughs> teat. I'll How put a picture you? of Richard's embroidery in. Smash that like button. Just Check out our second channel, uh, Knock Thrice 2, where we do pranks. Knock fourth times. Um, that's where we do behind the knock scenes. Twice. Yeah, knock twice. Knock twice. Twice. <laughs> behind the scenes videos. Richard, what do you think this is? This uh, is behind the scenes. No, but this is how we filmed this. Oh, you yeah. mean that camera yeah. over there? Yeah, and then the B sound B crew. camera? Thanks, Jerry. Um, we got our, our editing guy, Matt, over there. Anyway. What do you think about my bottles? It's sick. I love the little mushrooms. I love the little door. It opens, you know. I know, it's a fully functioning interior. Actually, someone lives inside. We're, yeah. we're working on a contract. For a full house tour, check out Knock Twice, <laughs> uh, our other. <laughs> full house for tour. a full, tiny little perfume bottle house tour, check out my second channel, <laughs> Knock Twice. Anyway, I got a lot of questions about how I made this and if I would make a video on it. How my fans requesting things. It was like four people. But you know what? You four people, this one's for you. So I hope you enjoy. I will be talking about the clay that I use, the tools I used. I just bought new, very sexy tools. And you don't need a lot of stuff to make it. Pretty much you need a bottle, you need some clay, and then you need some random stuff that you can find around your house. I, I kid you not, I made this with not a single actual clay tool. No, maybe I used one. I used one actual clay tool, and then aside from that I used some wire, both ends of a paintbrush, and some embroidery scissors. I used like a nothingness that I had around. So you really don't need like fancy tools. I did buy some tools because some things are easier to do with tools, but you don't need it at all. So I'll show you both ways. Like for this little moss texture, I literally just broke off a bunch of pieces of wire and then taped them together and then stippled it. So you know what, it's fine, you don't need much. If you have it acting as like a real perfume bottle, you just have to fully like clutch it. It's actually kind of nice to hold. The mushrooms support your thumb. It's very ergonomic, you know? Another one that I started, it's like a mushroom top, but I don't know, I'll just show you. It's got like a pumpkin and some mushrooms and more of the exposed bottle. I don't dislike it. I just kind of, I might make a different top. So we'll see. So come along with me on this playful adventure. Bring your own bottle. If you put a lot of detail and texture into the sculpt, your paint job is like, can be very fast, uh, which which is good, because it all takes a very long time. So, I'll show you it all. We'll get into it. Okay, let's go. So I keep most of my clay supplies in this little uh, Tiffin lunch container just because it's so cute and I'm not going anywhere for lunch. Um, so I, I wanted to use it. So 
In the top layer, I just keep my pins that I have finished, um, just for now. And in the bottom layer, I keep some of my little tools. Uh, I just got these. I have not used them yet. So this whole sculpture bottle was not made with these tools. So you do not need them, but I wanted them. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are from Amazon. I looked for secondhand ones and could not find any. So it came with a set of ball tools, which again, you, you can use other things, but to get this size, it's just, it's just easier. It's just a lot easier, so. I got those, and I got some uh, silicone tip tools, which I will be using today, but I will show you what I was using before as well. I also have just a little bit of light wire. I think it's like aluminum, so it's actually a little brittle uh, if I were gonna buy something else. Just get something a little bit um, stronger, because uh, you can just kind of wiggle this and it will uh, break, which sometimes is helpful, but it, it would be nice to have the option just to have something a bit stronger. So before I had these tools, I was just using household items. So I did sacrifice one uh, little paintbrush. As you can see, it's a bit gummy because I was using it uh, in the clay. However, it does kind of feel like silicone at this point, so I was able to kind of smooth out any ridges. So I would use a paintbrush, the front end and the back end quite a bit. I also use uh, a box cutter just for slicing like right angles. I sometimes use an X-Acto blade, uh, little embroidery scissors. These were just around. And yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much what I was using beforehand. Um, I did also create a little like wire pokey thing for the moss and I'll be doing that again today. I don't know where mine went so I will show you what I did with that as well. And I forgot to say to roll out the clay I was using a jar full of embroidery floss. I really do need a little rolling pin. I have a wooden one but then like clay gets into it so it's not a great system. I would like to buy one of those little rolling pins so but I've been using this. I also don't know if this is like the best angle, so you might be moving around. We will see. Okay, so these bottles are amber. They are 30 milliliter, one ounce bottles. I will link the ones I bought on Amazon down below. Uh, they come with a screw top and they also come with a spray top. So for this particular design, um, I, I'm first just gonna cover the whole thing with a, a layer of clay and build up the top chunky base. You pretty much wanna work from biggest thing to smallest thing and work down with your details. Would you look at that? It's voiceover Nora back again. How exciting. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't do many voiceovers, so please forgive me if this is a little chaotic. So the first thing I'm doing after um, wrapping the bottle, as you can see here, is um, rolling out a kind of thin tube thing and then wrapping it around the base. This is to kind of give that um, like root, rootage, tree root thing, and oh look, I'm showing you uh, how to use the paintbrush if you don't have the ball tool. So I used the back end of the paintbrush to kind of roll um, the clay together because you do want it to be nice and like strongly adhered and seamless, which will make it nice and sturdy. And so I'm just kind of repeating that. I'm going off of the roots that I added at the bottom and adding more thin. Um, rolls of clay just to kind of you know look like tree bark and just google a picture of a tree this will help you a lot i had a reference photo up i do find sometimes that drawings or like line art of trees or stumps in this case um, are sometimes better resources because they kind of block out like the largest shapes so for example this little root i cut in half with um, my exacto blade and then i'm just twisting them um, to kind of give them a more organic look and that let me tell you that's a great tip they looked really good when they were twisted I didn't I couldn't tell why they didn't look right um, that's because they weren't twisted everything has to twist now I'm using my little tools to um, kind of chip out some nicks from the top of the bark uh, you know when you see bark extending over like the little rings of the tree okay is this thing on? ah I'm sorry for this interruption. This is very important. We just got word in, this is live right now, uh, that we have a very special guest watching. So I, I'm sorry that I had to pause the video, but 
I needed to say uh, that this whole video is dedicated to Beth. And I hear Beth is a big fan, which is very exciting. I can't believe I have those, truly. A miracle. Uh, and thank you so much for watching, Beth. So I hope that you're enjoying the video so far. Uh, by the way, your mom is great, so keep her around <laughs> for as long as you can. Is that morbid? <laughs> That's a bit morbid. I don't think so. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your tea. If you're if you're watching this video at tea time, I have my cup of tea. So you know it's like we're sharing a cup, and enjoy the rest of this video and watch it knowing that it's for you. Bye, Beth. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Beth. Okay, that was um a little weird, but look, we've switched angles. Oh my god, this is so exciting. This was fun. I uh, carved out the hole, tree hole. <laughs> There's gotta be a better word. Um, anyway, using my X-Acto blade and then going around the edges with the uh, ball tool just to kind of soften it. You don't really want any right angles on this. I did do a honeycomb one later where right angles were the goal, but not on this one. You really want every angle to be kind of rounded and smooth uh, unless it's supposed to look like a chipped piece of bark or something. Oh, this is fun. I added little wood knot holes. I really feel like I should have looked up terminology here. Um, here I'm cutting out the door, the same technique. You just kind of slice it with the X-Acto blade. And I am taking a second piece to kind of smush in. I just find you get cleaner lines that way instead of trying to keep it all in one piece. Oh, and now I'm using my little pieces of wire uh, to make a moss texturing tool. It's like a little wire brush. So I taped some little pieces of wire together and you can see that when you stipple it on it makes a cool little like dotted texture. So now I'm just kind of refining the texture and taking a little lump of clay and then I smush it on where I want the moss to be just to give it a bit of three-dimensionality and I kind of push it down a little bit just to make sure it's adhered on the edges and then I go in with the little wire brush and you can really rough it up like you kind of want to get some deep holes um, because then it will give it more depth and then when you're done I just sort of pat over the top and it smushes it just enough that uh, it looks I don't know it looks like kind of cool and organic oh and here I am working on the mushroom chimney so I roll out the mushroom shape and then I stick a piece of wire in it just because I don't want it to go limp <laughs> and I do want it to have a little bit more support shove it on in there wherever you want it and then just smooth out the corners oh and these are the mushrooms these are chicken of the woods so pull up a picture um, I make them like this use a ball tool get nice round shapes texture them and then smush them on there now I'm working on the lid so I use a little piece of tin foil um, sounds kind of funny and I just wrapped the lid first uh, to make sure I had kind of like a sticky base and I'm making this one a little like squirrel nest so I roll out a very thin snake of clay and wrap it all around and use a silicone tool but you could use a paintbrush just to kind of smush it all in and make some look uneven okay now this is me sculpting the squirrel honestly guys I don't know how to tell you how to sculpt a squirrel look up a picture of a squirrel break it into its main parts um, and don't refine it until the very end because you're gonna add a bunch of fur texture and fur texture will cover all of the mistakes but here's me adding some of the fur texture it's hard it's hard to describe how to sculpt something um, like an animal but look oh my god she's so cute and then I just went in with my little silicone tool to give the whole thing uh, some texture and I really recommend you do that with like everything you make oh I'm making the toes oh my god the little toes you can't really see that on the sculpt now but I know I made squirrel toes. Night has fallen. Ow, mother bitch. Let's try that again. Night has fallen on the small town of Montreal. And I am like two bottles deep, feeling great. That is not what I meant to say. <laughs> I'm fucking wasted right now. It's been real surreptitious there. <laughs> um, I've made two bottles. I just finished. I only filmed the process of one of them because I really wasn't sure if the second one was going to work and also it was getting dark and really there's only so much sculpting footage you actually want to watch. Um, I did not do talk throughs because somebody had a class. Who's got two thumbs in class? 
this guy. I also meant to show you how to do the same techniques without these fancy tools. Um, I kind of did, I kind of forgot, but really wherever I use a silicone tip, just use a paintbrush that has a bunch of clay worked into it because it kind of works the same. And then the back of the paintbrush works really well as well, so figure it out. <laughs> I'm, not sure. I'm not here to teach you anything, except this is a DIY tutorial, so. Um, so the second bottle I made, is it my favorite? I don't know, I haven't painted it yet, obviously. I haven't even baked it, but I have to say, this sculpt. Richard, do you like it? Tell me, tell the people what you think before we show them. Hello? What, what, what do you want? I said, tell the people what you think about the newest bottle before I even show them. I love it, it's adorable. Is it your favorite one? Yeah, the Madrick. Oh, you spoiled it. Spoilers. This is the newest bottle, it's got it's got a little mandrake. Look at his leaves, his mandrake butt. And I get a mushroom on this side, obviously. Um, yeah, I really wasn't sure about this because as I was starting it, it just looked like a really weird baby and it was like a weird baby clinging to this bottle and I was like, ew, it's fucking nasty. <laughs> so I didn't like it. And then as I kept going, I, I do now. I forgot to texture the back of the leaves. I guess I should show you. Um, the full sculpt for the log bottle. So I made this mushroom a little bigger and I made these mushrooms just like look a little different, but very similar. The biggest difference, and I'm really excited about this, is the cap design. The cap design is a little tiny squirrel <laughs> and he's got the tiniest little acorn He's so cute, I love him. So yeah, these are, this is my progress for the day. Look at this distinguished gentleman. Uh, so I think that's it for tonight. Tomorrow I will be painting them. We'll be doing a live stream. Uh, tune in Twitch TV slash I totally, I'm kind of like tempted. <laughs> Do it. Next up is painting. It's the morning, can you tell? Richard has something to say to everybody. Smash that like No, button. don't say that. Say something cute and morning themed. Follow us on Twitch. Look like Shirley Temple. I look like a poodle. Poodle aesthetic aside. Oh my god, there's a Dalmatian outside. Mm -hmm. A puppy Dalmatian. Mm -hmm. She's running. And my ears hurt and let's get painting. Yay! These little guys have just finished baking and I thought I would share them. Look at this little tiny acorn. So this is the cap of one of the bottles. See? Oh, okay. Let's try that again. Oh my god. All right. So this is the cap. It just kind of like snugs on. This is the second tree stump. I did more of the mushrooms. I might make these tricky tail and not chicken of the woods, but I love the yellow of the chicken of the woods, and I kind of made this made this little guy bigger. But this is what I mean about them staying flexible, so it's not gonna break. And that, that's what it looks like with the squirrel. <laughs> that's so cute! Okay, this is the first mandrake bottle. He's got a bit of a squished face, um, but you know what? It's okay. And these three little mushrooms. And here is the second mandrake. Actually, I technically did this one first, so I suppose this is number one. And I, I kind of like his face a little more. His leaves drooped in the oven. But again, they are flexible, so there's not... Like, I don't want to whack them around, but there's not as much of a risk of them breaking. These are the paint jobs for today. I think of this as my little forest. <laughs> little forest of perfume bottles. Alright, so I'm beginning the paint. And my trick is, always work from the darkest shade to the lightest shade and it will be easiest and the cleanest way to do it. So here I'm mixing up a really dark brown, almost a black. I went over the entire thing and then I mixed up a lighter brown and I'm doing the dry brush technique. So mix your lighter color, wipe off the excess and then just run it over the, uh, the sculpt and all that texture that you added in should just be naturally highlighted. This is a bit of a too stark of a contrast, but um, I think it worked out okay in the end. Also, in case you're curious, these are Turner uh, acrylic gouache. So this means you can get an acrylic 
opacity, like really thick uh, full coverage, but you can also water it down. So that's why I quite like these paints and they stay flexible after they're dried. Um, so they're not gonna crack, which is always good. All right, and now same thing with the door. I used a really dark red and then I dry brushed a bright red over top. The mushroom, same technique, darkest red, added a little bright red, then adding dark brown dots and then light color everywhere else, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, once I mix up a color, I try and use that color wherever it's needed. Cute little mushroom dots. And for the turkey tail, oh no, sorry, uh, for the chicken of the woods mushrooms, start with the darkest orange where, you know, you really want all that depth and then work your way up with yellow and then a really pale white and then a really pale white. Same with the moss, dark green, and then brush over some light green. And now it's time to paint the squirrel. And similar to sculpting a squirrel, I don't really know what to tell you. I dry brushed uh, over the nest thing, dark brown, light brown. Tried to go for a bit of a warmer color just to get some tonal variation. And the squirrel is done. My camera battery died, so I painted the squirrel, but used the same techniques. He's got a little acorn. Let's see if I can show you better light. There he is. And and that's it. That's it. We're done. We have painted the bottle and we're done. Except there's three more to paint. <laughs> that took quite a while, but it was very fun. There is the finished bottle. And of course, a squirrel topper. I'm very happy with this one as well. I quite like the, that the mushroom matches the door. I was gonna go with a red squirrel, but Richard and I both kind of thought gray would be sort of nice. Brady? Hmm. You ready to, to eat? Yeah. What do you think about the bottle? Which one do you like better? The squirrel or the owl? The owl. I hope you liked the video. Um, I don't think I'm gonna film the mandrake painting because it's gonna get dark and I just, I didn't film the sculpt. So, you know, same technique. You just sculpt a mandrix, put it on a bottle, and then paint it. But yeah, I do find that the more work you put into the sculpt in terms of texture, the faster the paint job can go. And um, if you've got any questions, I can pretty much respond to literally all of them because my videos get like 20 views. So you're welcome to ask the questions. I will try and remember to link the clay that I use and the sculpting tools that I used and maybe the paint in case you are you want some of the paint. Time to go put these in a little forest and um, have a good day. Bye. I just thought I'd chime in here uh, one more time before I let y'all go because I realized I didn't talk about the clay at all. Um, so the clay that I use for all my bottle sculpting is cause clay and the reason I use it is because it stays flexible after you bake it unlike Sculpey or anything like that um, and it just means on a functional item like a bottle if you're going to be actually be using it you don't have to worry about bits breaking off like you know the leaves or something um, so it's amazing it's pretty much the same price it's about $16 Canadian for a pound it comes in a few different colors um, and yeah I, I'm never going back it's like the best thing I found all year and I'm I just I want to hoard it I love it so much it's a bit hard to find in Canada but I will put a link uh, in the description box of where I get it and they do ship within Canada so uh, hopefully you'll be able to get it and this is just me showing the varnishing process so I use a varathane which is water-based but because this paint dries down fully matte I just kind of daub it on and then it dries to a nice sort of satin finish and that's it bye